Americans. How are you feeling tonight, the old man? Oh, I am ready to divide and conquer. I am your host, Logan Bernhardt. The reason you stay awake at night, the personality you can't resist, the shrink you can't afford. Welcome to Heartburn. Tonight's subject is paranoia. You know, I wonder what this city would be like if it didn't have me to talk sense into it. Insanity. Okay, I see the lines are lit up. America, why are you so paranoid? At 11.05 p.m. in the east and 8.05 on the west coast, a series of explosions occurred at a number of sporting events and public gatherings. Something is wrong. Something is seriously wrong. This is not a normal riot. It is not. Release of a foreign substance or toxin. These things, what do you mean things? I'm staying on the air until they get this under control. The victims affected could be in the tens of thousands. Jesus Christ, what's happening? <coughs> Showtime. By tomorrow, millions of people are going to be infected with this thing. It is their eyes. They are like bleeding out of their eyes. Gil, can you hear me? Are you all right? Can you hear me? Oh, shit! Mommy? Hey, folks, this is Matt once again. And I had some reviews on my old account, but unfortunately I didn't have them saved, but I wanted to re-review them again. And one of them is a film called Dead Air. It was either made in 2008 or 2009. I'm not quite sure when it was released. I get different dates. I looked at one site, it said 2008. I looked at another, it said 2009. So. <clears throat> Sorry about that. But Dead Air is a film actually directed by Corbin Burnson, the guy from Major League, among many other films. The Dentist, from that horror film, The Dentist. He actually directed this film. And it stars Bill Mosley, of course you know him from The Devil's Rejects, Texas Chainsaw Master 2, and Patricia Tallman. And Patricia Tallman, she's been in a couple flicks, uh, I think most memorably the Night of the Living Dead remake. She was also the, the witch and uh, I think she was the witch in yeah, Army of Darkness. The one that Ash beats the shit out of, I think, and, you know, you, you will die. And, you know, Bruce Campbell shoots from the back of his head, you know, and he goes, whew. And then the witch falls down. I think that's actually Patricia Tolman in makeup. Because there was a, like a featurette and her talking about it. Um, she's in there. Basically, the film is a lot like another film I might review sometime, too, called Pontypool, where the different thing here is that, okay, you have a basketball game, and you can tell they sort of didn't use their own footage, because when, when they see the color of, you know, the basketball game, the color's faded, so that is, they just got, you know, rough footage from a game or whatever. But it's a basketball game. And you have these terrorists who sort of are going to plant this bomb. And they make a mistake and they drop this thing that sprays into the ventilation shaft. And apparently you find out later that in sporting events and other public places, um, terrorists and others have sort of put these specifically in major cities. Um, but before that, we're introduced to Bill Mosley, who he's a great reason to see this movie. It's not a great movie. It's like an okay movie. But Bill Mosley is definitely worth a watch. If you like Bill Mosley, you definitely should check it out. This is definitely one of his best performances because he makes a really good DJ. Um, and Patricia Tallman like, works at the radio station with them and also plays his ex-wife. And Bill Mosley has a current wife and kid at home. And he has like the number one radio show, and they're doing this program on paranoia, and at least a, a conversation about what about the Taj Mahal? You know, every time you see a picture, you only see it from the front. Have you ever seen it from the back? Have you ever seen? 
you know, get a little bit of funny stuff. Definitely helped by Bill Mosley. And we get a couple callers about paranoia, so you get, like, crazy calls, like a woman, talking about how, you know, how come cat food has, you know, this beef in it. And he, he like, hands up, like, not only is she paranoid, but she's a total moron. <laughs> Uh, another call about aliens, and, you know, Bill Mosley brings up crop circles, and then he says, You, sir, are retard. You know, so he's almost doing, like, a little bit of, uh, I guess, Howard Stern, in a way, a little bit of that. They have another caller talking about the Muslims, how they're paranoid about that. And off and on, you see, like, these two terrorists carrying the third one, who they ultimately put out of his misery because he's infected. And then he get a call from this guy named Vernon, which comes back later. <clears throat> and he talks about how his phones are being tapped. <clears throat> but then they get a call from a side guy, just in a panic, saying, you know, uh, he's in a building, there's been an attack at the stadium, and, you know, all strange shit's going down, there's been an attack, and then the lights go out, and the power goes out for a little bit, and they decide, they watch TV, and... It looks like zombies to me. I mean, basically, that's why I call them zombies. I mean, they're infected, but I call them zombies. You know, it's like, they almost go like black eyes, and, you know, they eat people. And they see it on TV, and they're horrified. And at that time, they have a security guard who gets killed. Um, and they give calls in. Like, one guy says there's uh, zombies who are pulling kids out. Um... Another guy calling in and saying, oh my god, you know, he saw me and you hear him getting attacked by, a, you know, a zombie. And uh, one of their guys sort of goes in the elevator and fights with the security guard who's now a zombie. <clears throat> and that's when they're, they're watching the news and they realize that the, the explosions have triggered this toxin that's going to all these major cities. And long story short... Bill Mosley's worried about his wife and kid at home, and his buddy, his sort of co-host on the show, says, Hey, got a motorcycle, has a little fight in the elevator, and gets on his motorcycle and heads out, and, you know, at first it's, like, empty, but he sees, like, swarms of them, and he sort of swerves in, and he, like, stops and sees, like, a bunch of people being attacked in a bus, like, attacking each other, and he rides out and tries to get out of there, He goes back through crowd, but he was hit and stuff, so he might have been scratched, so he might be infected now. Uh, then they get, Bill Mosley gets a call from that Vernon, the guy I was talking to him about, and he tells about, you know, he's still a little bit paranoid, but, you know, as Bill Mosley is basically listening to this guy die, he's watching the news, and the newsmen and women, the co-hosts on the news, they're getting attacked. They're still getting attacked by zombies and stuff. And you watch like a co-host woman, the news woman, fall down dead and rise back up and Mel Mosley. He plays it all pretty well. Um, and until up until then, I thought, okay, this is going pretty good. I mean, you know, I don't think you needed to see outside of the studio. The whole thing with the terrorists, I'm like, well, why, I don't know, I don't like the fact that you bring these politics, because, you know, now that I think about it, watching it again makes me think of Machete, Machete, which I don't like. But is it, you didn't really need the terrorist thing, angle. I mean, the whole thing, the fact that there's zombies is enough. You didn't really have to deal with all this, you know, waste of running time about the cause of it and stuff. But, I mean, it was alright, and, you know... The other actors around Bill Mosley aren't too top-notch, unfortunately. The callers, like this Vernon guy, when he dies, he, you know, he coughs. <laughs> you know, he, you know, he's not really good at dying. <laughs> that sounds stupid, but if you see the movie, you know what I mean. Uh, but I'm like, this is okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to just see how this goes. And then I think, and the third act sort of goes downhill. Because the, the last terrorist... Because then one died, you know, he goes in, he grabs Patricia Tallman, and then wants Bill Mosley to tell the people that the Muslims did it on the radio, and, you know, 
tell them there's going to be a nuclear bomb and this and that and uh, at the same time you know his buddy on a motorcycle he's actually a zombie now and gets to his wife and kids home and he go back to the radio station and basically fucking he has a little fight breaks his syringe that the terrorists need for his cure he gets pissed Bill Moses has to go down find another syringe he meets up with a girl she gets attacked and he goes back up dealing with the terrorist guy who then gets bitten before that, at least Bill Mosley has a good scene where he's angry and pissed off at the guy saying, you know, you're full of shit, you know, you say it's about this and that, and, you know, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know, you know Bill Mosley angry is pretty fun in this movie. But then the terrorist gets attacked, and then they have a stupid ending where it's like, I guess he, you know, he lifts his, like, ankle, like, sock on his ankle showing a scratch. And then it cuts like, you know, then he's on the floor, and then this Patricia Tallman going like this, and then it cuts, and like the, the footage is like, uh, I don't know if I can get the, shit, if I can find the, how I did that before, but it sort of was, uh, I can't find out where the hell it was. It's just one of those things I'm watching going, really? Like, you don't do this? Why? Like, why are you doing this? Why are you... Uh, let me see, which one would it be? Would it be this one? No, not that one. Not that one. No, not that one. In a way. Not that one. Not really that one either. Shit, they don't have it. Kind of fun doing this stuff, but uh, it's kind of like uh, like they move like this, but then take this and mix it with a little bit of like uh, you know how you do Windows Movie Maker and you have that old film, and it, it's like you know it, no, and then it cuts to you know him on the Bill Mosley on the ground, and oh, and now we got the injection and. And now I'm talking, now I'm like this, shit, I'm stuck like this. But, it's like these annoying quick cuts, and then it's the next morning, and apparently the terrorists, they didn't want the thing to go global, so what they did is, they had this virus that basically fucks people up, but it wears off. Well, not really wears off, the people drop dead, like, by the next morning. Because they didn't want to go global with it. And, you know, go back to their own home country, I guess. Now, there's one of those things that just... I don't know, it just seemed off. Um, Patricia Tolman goes with these uh, health... You know, uh, like FEMA-type people. Because she has, you know, to help with the cure, just in case. And Bill Mosley goes to his family... And you see that his wife has a scratch on her neck. <clears throat> Dead air. I, I remember the first time I reviewed this, I was kind of really a little bit more positive. Watch it again. It's not, it doesn't really hold up, to be honest. Um, it got kind of boring at times. I like the concept of the radio DJ being in the studio while a zombie attack getting callers, watching the news. I thought they did a better job with it with Pontypool. Even though, you know, they, you know, if I review that, and you know, there's certain things I didn't like about that film either. But, I think you could have taken Bill Mosley, really, like, either by himself, or with only, like, one or two other people, and not even go outside. Don't go outside unless you see it on the news. Um, hear it from the radio, you know, from people calling in. And also, you know, maybe they can get into the studio as well, zombies as well. But you don't need to go outside, and you definitely don't need this terrorist bullshit popping up. It was almost like Corbin Burson was trying to get some political motive or political 
metaphor into it, and it just doesn't work. It does was not needed in the film. Uh, maybe it's a little bit heavy handed in the message. Um, and just, you know, at times like the ending, I thought the directing fell flat. Bill Mosley's great actor, the other actors are eh. Um, you don't really see a lot of good gore. Like, it's not really a gore fest at all. It's rated R, but I'm just saying, you know, you get your typical, okay, you stab a guy in the stomach. You do get a decent one where, um, the terror shoots a zombie in the head, but somebody gets stuck, like, right at the back of his head, and the zombie, like, picks it, and looks at it, and falls down. But, yeah, the lame ending, um, actually, I think a lame third act, um, a premise that seems interesting, with, uh, Bill Mosley giving a good performance, um, you know, it's not a horrible film, I thought it's an okay flick, but, you know, I can't, would I recommend to people? Not really, unless you're a big Bill Mosley fan. If you want to see Bill Mosley do a good performance as a DJ, you know, it's worth your time. If not, I don't think it's really going to be a lot of people's cup of tea. It's just, <clears throat> the whole terror subplot was needed. Venturing outside was not needed. They should have just kept it contained in that um, studio. Which I think is one of the things they did in Pontypool Wright. That's why I like that one a little bit better. A little more than a little bit. <clears throat> it's just that film's ending wasn't really that great either, but you know, it was a deal. Hey, you're in LA, whatever, and you got a zombie attack, and you know you're seeing it on the news, and you have to respond and sort of give be the voice of the people in a way. People have no hope. They like, listen on the radio, and you know. But, you know, what do I know? But Dead Air, you know, it's okay, but, eh. You know, if you want to watch it, watch for Bill Moles. Other than that, it's not so-so to... It's like so-so. Like, eh. I didn't hate watching it. But eh, it could have been a lot better. I think that's the thing. It could have been a lot better, especially with Bill Moles doing a good job as the DJ, so... Anyway, thanks for watching, and take care. Later.